Oh, hi there everyone. Today I wanted to kind of go over, I've been talking about Starlink and I've only been able to use it for that week I was in Palm Springs, but I did record some stuff and I think now is a good time I can rewind and kind of take care of some of that unboxing video. And then um, I got some other fun stuff to talk about too. So here we go. This is from like last week when I first got Starlink. It's finally here. This. It's finally here. Ugh. Starlink. I went to go get this at the office of the campground I'm at and I gave him my pickup tag and he's like ah it's a good day for you and I was like yes it's been over a year waiting all right you ready let's see this stuff let's see what uh let's see this what everyone's talking about here uh, well, that's a disappointment. That's just an empty thing. All right, so we've got, looks like a stand. And more plastic for the kitties. Oh, and, oh, look at, this is the new one. It's got the, uh, it's a rectangle one. Look at that. Looks like it could also be used as like a video screen. Let's see if I just, what is, wait, what is all this? Okay, so let's put this in here for now. Because I'm assuming it goes in better than that. And this, I don't know what this thing is. Guess the instructions will tell me that. Yep, that's it. So, big old box. A lot of packaging. There you go. You can hop in there. Place a Starlink in the thingamabobber. Plug the thingy in. Connect it to Wi Fi. Connect it to Wi Fi. You're supposed to be the Wi-Fi. Or the internet. Okay. This is going to be one of those instructions where I have to take a picture of it and then blow it up on my screen to be able to read it. Because that's some tiny ass... What's this? Like... Yep, this is definitely a take a picture of it and blow it up to read it kind of day. Alright, so I'm downloading the app now. And I'm going to assume there's some sort of setup instructions on. All right, so it says plug it in. I'm just plugging it in here in the rig because I don't know. Uh, Starlink would like, okay, I am connected. There's a Wi-Fi network around here called FBI van number two. Oh, it's got a little, okay. So this little blue bar is moving. So I think that's connecting. Why is it taking so long? Connect to Starlink Wi-Fi? Oh. Duh, okay, I'm an idiot. Don't get mad at me in the comments. Don't, uh... <laughs> don't... Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so we've got the network created. Connecting, recreating. And yes, it has connected. Okay. Now the Starlink page. Starlink is connected. Connected device, one device, two devices. Stereo Starlink is plugged in. It is plugged in. Visibility. All right, so I've got the Starlink. I put it outside. I've got this thing here. I still don't know what this does. I don't know if this needs to be outside, but this has got the short plug, so I'm assuming it needs to be close to power. I don't know if this is supposed to be looking somewhere or not. Didn't really say, but it says here that it is booting, so we're going to let it boot. All right, so I was reading the owner's manual. you got to download it from the Starlink website, and there's this... Um, Thing where it says it's going to automatically stow, tilt, and um, find the thing. And so I came outside and yeah, it just automatically adjusted. So this means right now it's in auto level sky searching mode. So it's checking stuff out. Okay, so just going through the instructions and some of the other people that I know that use Starlink, they always talk about trying to find an open cell where they use an address to identify, but this one's not giving me that option. This one, it looks like it's saying that it'll tilt up and it'll connect to a Starlink satellite. You gotta give it time to connect. And then once it finds one, then it will connect to all the other ones. So it kind of eliminates the need for having to find an open cell on the address. It looks like it finds one automatically. But I don't know how long it takes. That's the thing. But it says it needs an open area. I don't know if it's better here or if it will be better up on the uh, table in the back. You just gotta give it some space, I guess. Okay, so I just tried this tool. It's called a um, estimated obstruction view. 
And what you do is, it says here you look up. So you go to where the dish is, and then you look up. And I don't know if you can see that, but you scan the sky, and then it gives an idea of what's all around you. And it analyzes everything. It'll tell you to view results. It'll estimate your obstructions. Right here, you may want to find a better spot. So that's telling me that this is a no-go as far as good spots. And the blue on that map is where all the good... Oh, look, you can kind of see the palm trees. <laughs> you may need to find a better spot. I'll click on that little info bar. And then it tells me frequent interruptions with streaming video, web browsing, video calls, and online gaming. This location is 4.5% obstructed. 4.5% uh, is not horrible, but it says, I don't know, there's that, more of that small print. Let's try it in a different location here. Well, just as other people have complained about, can't get signal in this area. Not signal, service. All the cells at this park are full, so I'm just gonna keep trying and see what happens. All right, so just an update. I found an address that's about eight miles away from where I'm at, and it was able to work, and I got connected, but I was trying different locations, so I ended up having to put the dish up on the roof of my car, and when I did that, everything seemed to, hi Izzy, everything seemed to just work just fine. Okay, I need to get out of this rig. I'm getting a little claustrophobic. I've been working just so much, and I forgot. I know I promised I was gonna do this last week, but in here are all of the keychains that need to be mailed out. I'm heading over to the post office. But first, because remember yesterday I set up the Starlink account and I set up the Starlink and to get a good signal, I had to put it on the roof of my Jeep, but now I gotta travel. So there's a mode in here. There's supposed to be a mode in the Starlink app where I can go to settings and then I can, Stow, right there, Stow Starlink. And what's supposed to happen is it's gonna tilt down and um, I'll be able to move it. So I'm gonna hit Stow, uh, okay. Wow, that was fast. That was pretty fast. I was expecting it to kind of go, eh, but this thing just went plunk. I was like, all right. And then now it says unstow. So I set it up that way and now, The one thing about this new dish is it is much, much lighter. We'll just put it right here. Oh, look at how dusty it got. The manual said it came comes with 75 feet of cable. And then online, you can buy an extension cable for 150 feet if 75 isn't enough. All right, so Starlink is done. So yesterday I put all my Apple TVs and my computer all onto the Starlink network, my phones and the iPad onto the Starlink network. I left the alarm system, the cameras and all that other stuff on the on the hotspot because like times like now when I'm leaving and I'm gonna disconnect the Starlink, I wanna make sure that the alarms, the cameras and all that other stuff always works. And if I'm driving down the road, obviously Starlink won't be set up. So I wanna make sure it's gonna be working in that way too. So, but so far it's been fantastic. We'll see what happens when I get back from the post office and see how easy it is to reconnect once it's already been disconnected like this. All right, time to go. I'm gonna take these two because I might need to Stop by car wash. Yesterday during that windstorm, I made the mistake of leaving some windows open. There's sand and dust, but not even dust, sand. There's sand everywhere in this car, in the rig. It's gonna be a major cleaning day today. Oh my gosh, take a look at this when I start driving. There's so much sand in like the windshield here. And you can see it. As part from the windshield blade. All right. Post office with the drive through mail. That is perfect. That's all of them. All right, back. <clears throat> Oh, back at camp. I also uh, take a look. Jeep got all washed up. I want to see how easy it'll be to reset up the Starlink. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, 
I'm gonna go and put it back. I'm gonna put it back outside. And now this is gonna be slightly different because it's angling this way, but I know that before it was angling that way. So I'm gonna see if it's gonna autocorrect. And I'm gonna go settings, connect to the Starlink. So now I'm going to unstow. And it's rotating. It's finding its locations. It is searching. The map is says searching. If I remember right, the searching part takes a while, so I'm gonna get out of the sun. Okay, it's been about three minutes, and I just looked out the window, and I see that the dish on the Jeep has found its location, so I am logging back into the Starlink app. All right, I'm gonna log back into the Starlink app, and we're gonna see that it shows that it's online. There's an error that says obstructed. Expect a error every two minutes. So it says I am online. Let's see what the speed says. So on this, by the way, there's three things that it does. This one here measures iPhone to internet or the device that you're on. So if you use a speed test on like an iPad or your Apple TV, this is what is going directly to the internet. So now it's doing my upload speed. Looks like six, seven megs upload, 11 down. Then what it's gonna do is it's gonna go on to this next one here. This is the router to the internet speed. And that's gonna give me different readings from the router to the internet. So you have the internet to the phone, the internet to the router, and this next one I forget what the next one is going to be, but let's see what the speeds are on this one. Router to internet, 150 megs down. Now we're looking at 12, 10 up. And then the last one here is iPhone to router. So iPhone to router, router to internet, and iPhone to internet are the two different versions that this speed test will give you. So right now the iPhone to the router, I'm at 126 megs down and we're looking at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 130, 140, 150. The upload speed is cranking, man. Look at that, holy smokes. That's iPhone to router. Okay, so summary right here. Let's see. Summary, iPhone to internet, 11 megs down and two megs up. Router to internet, 150 megs down, five megs up, and iPhone to router, 126 megs down and 218 megs up. That's how it is right now. And it's still saying that I am getting some sort of obstructed experience and interruption every two minutes. It was fast, I just need to readjust it. I bet you if I brought that closer to the back of the car where it could clear the RV, it would be better. All in all, pretty easy to use so far. I mean, if I weren't in an RV park, if I were out in a field boondocking somewhere, I think I can get some pretty good data and some really unobstructed views. But here, palm trees, rigs, things driving through, it's just not an ideal spot for it so far. But hey, I'm happy so far, so that works. Okay, so now let's check to see what the speed test is on my laptop here. So I just connected. Let's see how this compares to the speed on the iPhone. Oh, there it goes. Maybe we were in one of those two minute dead zones. Six twenty-seven. Upload. What do you think? Uh, I was gonna guess ten. And five and a half, six-ish. Yeah. You know, one thing I will say about my T-Mobile Sprint Wi-Fi hotspot that I get from FMCA, the Family Motor Coach Association, it's unlimited. It's fifty dollars a month, and I've been using that now for about two months straight. And when I was doing vloguary. I had all those uploads and all the downloads, all the editing done off of that one MiFi card, never got data capped, never lost speed, never was, um, except, you know, well, Quartzite was a different story, that's in a, but whenever, wherever, wherever, but, 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 
but where I was everywhere else, uh, no issues whatsoever. That thing was a champ through the entire series of Loguary. $50 a month, you can't beat it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that one, I'm going to keep the Starlink, and I'm going to get rid of that AT&T one. That was $150, and that was spotty. So I think that's what I'm going to be moving to because I just think that's a better deal right now. And today, it's just still sitting in the box, waiting until it can be used again. So I'm here in Mesa, and then I'm doing some stuff in Phoenix, and then I'm going out to, uh, back out to, I don't even know what the name of the town is, where I'm getting my solar done. It's not gonna get, until, it's not gonna be until I get back to Tucson that I'm gonna be able to have any sort of access to the Starlink again. So it's, it's gonna be a while, uh, but I've already secured my address. So I'm hoping that it's going to work. That's the one thing that you kind of can do as you're moving around. You can go and you can kind of go in there and lock down your location, your service address. So I've already locked that down for Tucson, and then we'll kind of see what happens. I just hope that it keeps going on. So anyways, I wanted to, um, you know, when I was closing out the bar, there was some stuff that, that I wanted to take with me. And it's not so much sentimental stuff. It was just some things that I brought in that were more personal, uh, that may brought from home or something that I contributed to the bar that I didn't want to sell with the bar. And <laughs> I got this, I, I, and in one of my videos, it was the, um, one where I talked about fueling at truck stops. I got trolled on that one, and there's a comment here. Let me see if I can find it. I'll put it up for you here, this comment. And and I was like, I don't, why do I even need a Starbucks? I don't even really go to Starbucks. I've got, I do something better. This. I was not gonna let this thing sit in the bar. It's traveling with me. There we go. And you know what the great thing about this model is? Is it has this little thing here where you can roll it. And then when you want to lock it, you just rotate it. It suctions on and it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm hoping that it'll be like that for when I'm traveling and I don't have to move it. And then that's not all. Oh yeah, I got that too. In here, we've got ooh, some chocolates and some caramel and some, ooh, look at that. That looks good. Some white chocolate in there, some plastic cups, and most importantly, some espresso beans. This is coming in with me. Daisy. All right. See that internet troll? I don't need no Starbucks because I got a Starbucks with me everywhere I go. Of course, the problem with bringing in new stuff is you got to find places to put all the new stuff, and you know sometimes you forget you're in an RV and there's not always places to put everything. It's been sitting, so I'm gonna. Do a little cleaning session here, six and a half minutes. All right, so I got my setup. I've got my chocolates and caramels. I just need to go get some milk the next time I'm at the store and more espresso beans. Got to add that to my shopping list. But I'm going to sit down and instead of having a glass of wine at the moment, it's 6.17, I'm going to have a little coffee and, and then I'm going to have some wine. 